Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. And welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. Today we are joined by Anne Marie McKenzie. Anne Marie is the owner of Hustle and Heart, finding balance for joy, freedom, and abundance. She empowers A type personalities or recovering people that are impact driven entrepreneurs to avoid stress, overwhelm, and burnout by bridging the intelligence of the heart with the soulful strategies for life and business. Welcome to the show, Anne-Marie. I'm so excited to chat with you about numbers today. (laughs) Thank you, Jill, for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to this conversation and connecting with your community. Oh, I'm looking forward to it too. So you, I could ask you, you know, how you got started and all this stuff, but I think that you really wanted to share what's coming up with the new year. And as you're coming on the podcast, it's probably the beginning of February. Um, Do you want to share with the audience that information? Would you like to share your story? Where do you want to start? Well, I think it's important for everybody to know that I'm a soulful business strategist. So that's first and foremost, what it is that I do. I support people, as you said, in understanding how to put heart over hustle and bridge that gap between our heart's intelligence and this inspired action that we take as spiritual entrepreneurs. Uh, Numerology came online for me just a couple of years ago, but it was one of these modalities that just spoke to me like truth. Like I had heard this before that this wasn't actually new information. I was remembering it rather than learning it. And Mm -hmm. I started integrating it quite quickly and easily with my clients And we collapsed so many timelines. It was absolutely incredible to be able to hone in on their purpose and their dharma and support them to understand their gifts and the medicine that they're here to bring to their soulmate clients and also look at their challenges and go through them (laughs) rather than avoid them or take long bits of time in order to figure it out what it is that they're here to overcome. So it's been an absolutely incredible tool and now one of the main things that I do is I forecast. So I understand the energetics of numbers and all their layers within people and also within the universe. And so we can look at this information and set up soulful strategies for ourselves in our life and in our business and align our thoughts, align our feelings and take inspired action from that place just to create more momentum and ease. That's where the let's get rid of the stress. Let's get rid of the overwhelm. Let's not burn ourselves out anymore. This is a new earth paradigm, as you know, and we're here to do things quite differently, especially infusing a lot more of that divine feminine into business to balance out the masculine. And I use numerology as this beautiful masculine structure to support our feminine flow. So once we have this information, then again, we can just calibrate, we can align, we can choose to move through these energies uh, with less resistance to create more expansion and growth. Yeah. I love that. And you were talking about collapsing timelines and I, I can totally see how that happens when I've seen uh, uh, from time to time, people, they get started in something and they think they're going in one direction, but without really understanding what, what their purpose is and they kind of have to go on this long meandering path and, and eventually, you know, if they stick with it, they'll find it, but it's much easier if you just look at all the numbers and, 
and take it from that perspective first. And it kind of helps you embrace who you are fundamentally and then start there, <laughs> then go forward rather than going forward and gathering all the stuff to you and then trying to sort out how that fits in. Mm -hmm. So I agree. It's so validating to find out these little bits and pieces. It, it, like you said, it gives us the confidence to move in a direction, again, knowing that it's aligned with our purpose, with who it is that we are and what it is that we're here to do. And there's, it's all an experiment, right? It's all, mm -hmm. there's an opportunity for us to play, for us to experiment, for us to learn, for us to grow. However, especially when it comes to business, there's so many moving parts to it, right? You, we, we think we're going to show up and I'm going to be a coach, for example, and that's all we're going to do as coach. And that's not the reality at all. There's many different hats that we wear and understanding who it is that we are in our energetic code supports us to spend the majority of our time and focus and energy in the spaces and places that we're meant to play with and then learn how to delegate and build teams, <laughs> allow other people to express their, uh, their gifts uh, within their energetic code as well. Yeah. And so having, having an idea on where you fit energetically and also where your team fits energetically, mm -hmm. where they can support you and the things that you aren't that great at. So I've always believed that you should surround yourself with people much better than you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. And not try to like micromanage them because yeah. you can, you, you know, if you do it right, you build a team of people and everybody's contributing something really valuable to the team and it makes the whole mission much better. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of where the, where the fem divine feminine comes in. We're more about team building, encouraging one another, appreciating the gifts that each individual has mm -hmm. to, to push the whole collective forward. So I'm really excited to hear about what's in store for this year energetically okay so for anybody in the audience who is unsure how to do the calculations it's very simple 2024 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 4 equals 8 so that's where we are getting the calculations from and why we are speaking about the number 8 today so this is a universal energy year 8 and that means that all of us will be experiencing this in the collective consciousness we have our own personal energetic code as well. So all of us will have our own personal year and that's your month and the day that you were born and the upcoming year 2024. And that will show you what your personal year is. And there's so many layers of our own personal energetic code as well. We have a ruling number. We have a personal day number. Some people know that as like life path, soul path. We have arrows uh, in our energetic grid. And I'm saying this because our personal energetic code will impact and influence how we experience this universal eight energy year. But I will say that I'm very excited for all of us in the collective because the eight represents reclaiming the power of infinite abundance. And the seven energy year that we have all been through, I think all of us are ready for that, right? <laughs> We're all ready to claim some power and especially reconnect with infinite abundance. I know that my Sunday afternoon calls with my nanny, there has been a lot of conversations about how much things cost at the grocery store <laughs> these days <laughs> and kind of giggling it's and, and crazy. Yeah. And like, you know, doing it in a very lighthearted way. But um, my partner makes fun of me when we are at the grocery store, because I'm like, what? like six dollars and fifty cents for like this pack of noodles it used to be etc cetera, etc cetera. and he's like you're turning into your nanny and I'm like yes yes in some ways but there's this it's so shocking <laughs> it's right hard. yeah it's and hard not to I think that you can feel it and and your audience probably feels it as well that there's been this re this really big push in the matrix for us to think and believe that we are not enough and that there is not enough. Yeah. This year, especially, I, I, I've i noticed it this year, whereas 
at the beginning of the year, I I'd, I'd kind of come in off of a high of like so much possibilities. Mm -hmm. And then all last year, it, it felt like, um, it just felt like the powers that be wanted to oppress everybody all at the same time, just like contraction everywhere, you know, the recession word. I don't, I purposefully don't like engage my thoughts in, in what's going on in that area, but you, you can feel the energy of it and you could feel the energy. There was a lot of abundance during COVID mm -hmm. and, um, and, and breaking out an opportunity and, you know, people doing things differently. And I, it was truly the silver lining of the whole, whatever it was, mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> whatever that was. Yes. But it did on a global scale shift something mm -hmm. massively. And it's, it's good to hear that we're going to kind of like it's get past true. this yeah. last year and that things are going to change. And mm -hmm. It's kind of I'm, exciting. I'm glad that you brought that up because it's really important in order for us to really understand and embrace reclaiming the power of infinite abundance. It's important for us to know where we've been. So when we think about globally, what's happened, 2021 was a five energy year and five represents change. <laughs> it's very disruptive as well. And look at all the changes that happened. And then we moved into 2022 and there we were, there was more connections that happened. Uh, it was about realigning with peace and harmony and creating more balance. So learning how to uh, say no, and it's not a coincidence that we saw uh, the great resignation happen during that time as well, where many people left their careers. Uh, many people started new businesses during that time as well. Yep. And we're very prosperous with it. And then we moved into 2023. As you said, I agree. It was full on. It was like a rocket ship was taking off and we were all ready for that. The seven energy is a spiritual badass. There's no other way to describe it. It is, uh, it is this year of a rebirth of spirituality that's been happening and seven energy is is also extremely disruptive. It encourages us to take risks. It wants us to trust and have fierce faith, even when we can't see <laughs> what's coming forward. And that growth and that expansion, it often happens because of loss. We can choose to make changes, we can choose new paths, we can choose to pivot, but it's often the times that we don't have control over a situation, that's where the biggest growth happens. So we've experienced this in 2023 on many, many levels. And I love it because more people are awakening and more people are deepening into this idea that we are here for a purpose, we have a reason our soul chose a contract in this lifetime with ourselves to experience a particular set of spiritual assignments that I call them and to contribute to our own growth and evolution. So when we, we bring all of that awareness into the eight energy of 2024, it's really empowering because we can look back and realize, wow, Look at everything that I have done. Look at everything that I have been through. Look at everything that I have learned. Look at how I've grown. Look at how I stepped outside of my comfort zone and did that thing. And I had no idea what was going to come from it, but look at where we are here and now. And none of this is a coincidence. The eight energy, I always see eight energy as two fours. I know that we can get an eight with five and three. <laughs> I know that we can get an eight with seven and one, but I always see it as four and four. And I believe that I associate four, four with it because the eight, when we look at it, when we look at that symbol, it's two concentric circles on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And when we lay it down, it's an infinity symbol. And typically these circles that are concentric are equal as well. So there's this mirroring effect. So that's why I see it as the four, four energy. And the four is about 
creating foundations. The four is about sustainability. The four loves organization and structure. And the four really is this energy that sees problems as opportunities. So all of that is embedded into the eight energy. And when there, there feels like something isn't right, something is offline, it's typically because we haven't accessed the resources that we need in order to solve the problem. That's what's energetically blocking our own abundance to move forward with it. The eight energy is mastery. It's about commitment. It's about devotion. It's understanding the dichotomy that we live in and embracing both the light and dark, the feminine and the masculine, the this and the that, the black and the white, and owning that it all is meant to be a part of it and is all meant to be loved. When we're not operating on the high frequency and vibration of the eight, we can experience overwhelm. We can get really competitive, get really hard on ourselves, very critical. If we're not moving forward and aligning with that momentum and that flow that eight creates, it's typically because we're still stuck in that energy of seven and not deciding, not making a decision. The eight, and this I'll talk about this when we discuss predictions, but it really in the low vibration is doing things out of obligation instead of doing things for the sheer joy of it. So all energies have a high vibration and a low vibration, and, and it's always a choice of what aspect of that energy that we want to play with. And it's not meant to be we're not meant to criticize ourselves or put ourselves down for maybe, oh my gosh, I'm doing this thing out of obligation again, even though I don't want to do it. I'm doing this out of obligation. It's not because I want to do it. It's because I feel obligated to do it. It's okay. But there's uh, this opportunity again for us to recognize that and mirror how we're feeling internally about this and recognizing that it's uh, reflecting in our material world as well, that that inner world will be an amplification in the material world in in this upcoming year i think that inner what you're feeling on the inside that manifests on the outside is mm -hmm. very crucial piece of what you just said and it, yeah there's times when you do things out of obligation but when you're recognizing that there's balance the possibility for balance does exist and that you should, you know, yes, you're going to have some things you're obligated to do, but you should balance that out with things that bringing you new opportunities and are moving you forward. And so that it's not all of one or all of the other, mm -hmm. then you can try to live more in the higher mm -hmm. vibration. Area. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, when we look at the eight, when we actually have a visual visualization of it. And I really do like laying it down on its side because that's infinite abundance. That's that eternal yeah, symbol. Right? Yeah. And the beautiful space to be in is where those two concentric circles hang out, but it's not realistic to just reside within that center because the eight has vigor. It needs momentum. It wants to keep rolling. It wants to keep rocking and rolling. <laughs> and again, that's about embracing the light with the darkness as well, the masculine and the feminine and, and loving it all and experiencing it all. The eight energy is like beauty and the beast. And this is about learning how to walk with the beast, not tame it. It's a part of you. It's reminding me of an electron mm. an electron is is a wave it's not mm -hmm. it's not a dot on the shell it's it's at one point and it's everywhere at the same time mm -hmm. and that seems like what you're saying about the eight in in that 
it's the line between mm -hmm. the dark and the light. Mm -hmm. It's not the dark. It's not the light. It's both. both. It's everything. That's all that is. And learning how to anchor into that energy. I, I love it. It feels really good, doesn't it? It does feel good. It feels really good. <laughs> So I have a few predictions and strategies that I would love to share with you. I um, would love to hear it. <laughs> okay. uh, and I know that we're just starting to build our relationship, but I want you and your audience to know that I come from a very positive place. I am never somebody who channels negative energy, who shares anything that's doom and gloom, but I will give you hints of things to be mindful of things to be aware of that are potential possibilities but it's not meant for you to focus on those low vibrations or the low energies it's to bring awareness because again what we think and what we feel and the inspired action that we take creates our reality so I want to share with you a lot that's going on in the high vibrations of everything so you can hang out and calibrate in that space and reclaim the power of infinite abundance for 2024. So the first one is Dharma alignment, 100% more souls will come on board with their purpose and what it is that they're meant to do in this lifetime. And it may come quickly in this, whoa, I had never even thought of this before, but there will be this unfolding and this unpacking of, oh, this makes sense because this happened in 2020 and then I experienced this in 2022 this makes sense why this is happening for me right here right now so there might not be this full understanding of why am I feeling called to do this but the invitation is to trust that the why and the how and the what will will unfold as it needs to be and that's very empowering in my opinion for us to and maybe some people already know what their purpose is. Maybe some people already know what it is that they're here to do. And if that's the case, then the spiritual entrepreneurs will step into a higher level of visibility and they'll start to niche down as well. And if you haven't done this yet, then I highly recommend it because when we try to be everything to everyone, we end up being nothing to, to anybody. Anyone. Yeah. Like, and so they're, the the dharma that we are here to align with in 2024 will that clarity will come through the audience and the the spaces and the places and the people that we spend time with in order to support us in understanding on a deeper level our own personal values and how it is that we want to feel when we experience these connections with other people that support our purpose and that will also help with the obligation energy, because it'll feel really good to want to be in these particular spaces and places with certain people. And then this awareness will come through that, oh, uh, this thing that I've been doing out of obligation, maybe this club or community or these family uh, events that, that I keep doing, they don't feel like these new experiences feel, and there's like a mismatch there. And I think it'll be more in 2025 that there'll be the ending and the releasing, but in 2024, it will, um, we'll start peeling back the layers and letting go of people, spaces, and places that don't support that Dharma alignment. Do you feel that? I do feel that. I feel it all. You're talking and I just like the gut level is like, yeah. Mm -hmm. see it coming already I, I can see it in my own business and mm -hmm. yeah but and you can see how that's connected sense. to infinite abundance right mm -hmm. I, I yeah the, the universe is like oh Jill is here to play she's starting to get it and that, and that conversation with the universe god goddess all that is source it just there's like okay we are working together we are understanding that we are one and we are an extension of oneness and, and the whole building the whole year has been uh, it's been a process that you know you you think you're going to be in one thing and then as as it all unfolds 
you put your intentions out there, but it's it's interesting to be able to be curious and to watch mm -hmm. as the universe delivers back to you what you asked for, but it never comes in the way that you think it's going to come. <laughs> you yeah. have to be aware <laughs> and you have to be curious. <laughs> That's why I call myself a recovering E-type because I used to be someone who tried to control everything in the universe. Just God just keeps laughing. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Anne Marie, yeah. <laughs> you can control everything and you really can't. Or yeah. Yeah. Same with these predictions. I keep them very um non-specific <laughs> for mm -hmm. a reason. Uh yeah, for an absolute reason. Okay, so the next thing, which is an which is uh the next um aspect of Dharma alignment is higher cash flows. I think for many, many people, we are going to experience higher cash flows. And that makes sense because the more we show up as the highest, most authentic version of ourselves, that authenticity becomes magnetic. And then we much easier than ever before start attracting those soulmate clients. So we can expect higher cash flows. That comes from the niching down, but what's really important with this in order to keep that momentum is hanging out in the divine feminine, which to many people seems counterintuitive. Wait, what? You want me to do less to get more? Yes, because the feminine is what receives. And so if you haven't slowed down, like we're being invited to in 2023, if you didn't take time to slow down, you will not speed up. So you might get a glimpse of that higher cash flow, but it may not happen again for a long period of time because you didn't choose to hang out in the energy of the feminine and receive that abundance. The other aspect of that higher cash flow is more play which I think is a little bit more of the feminine, <laughs> less serious. So it will connect to those. That's a yes, right? We're both, yeah. we're both was... open for all of that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right? Totally. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention that the eight energy when gone unchecked, unchecked that addictions could potentially show up and be at play. And I did bring this up on purpose, like after I'm discussing the higher cash flow, if you have an addiction to shopping, it will come to light this year and be asked to be healed. If you're a workaholic, it will be brought to light and will be asked to heal. The eight, because mastery and commitment and devotion are such a huge aspect of its energy, when we don't pause, and this week in particular, I'm talking about it in my communities, more yin and less yang. In. <laughs> and again, that's that feminine energy that we hang out in the masculine overdrive, which is that connection to addictions, and it blocks that energetic flow. It blocks the infinite abundance that wants to come through. Does that make sense? makes total sense it, yeah. it's, it's easy to get caught up in you have all these ideas and you want to make them all happen like mm -hmm. yesterday yeah and it's important to take time to just be to mm -hmm. relax to yeah. let your intuition process all of the things rather than just doing 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 mm -hmm. you can get more done in less time exactly. if you're really clear on how to do it and a lot of that can just be done in your head mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you need to actually yeah. be doing it 14 times to get it right and this isn't about I know you'll agree with this Jill this isn't about checking out no, this is no, about numbing ourselves you know binging on a t on tv or um leaning on substances like this is about that yin energy is about the resting and the rejuvenation and having a nap and hanging out in the hammock and gazing up at the making the leaves and exactly. doing the things that like yeah. their their practices even walking it's yeah. it's something that you're doing but that it's kind of a meditation in and of itself that you mm -hmm. can doesn't require a lot of brain work to get to be doing the thing and you can even actually just meditate, but yeah, I, I like B 
being outside and Mm -hmm. me too sometimes yeah and the things that we're doing outside I know that both of us want to emphasize this it's not because it's on your to-do list it's not like well I have to rate this again it's that obligation energy it's not not doing it out of obligation you're doing it because you love to do it because it's bringing you joy. You love being outside. And this is very typical of you with all of that six energy, love being outside. Um, that because there's that connection to the outer world, your inner world is connecting to that outer world. And the act of raking is very meditative, right? Very. When I talk about eight energy and when I been doing research on the eight energy my number one person that I look to to understand it is Robin Williams so somebody who's a complete master but also struggled with addiction so if anybody wants to tap into the eight energy in a really fun way and understand what it is that we're talking about watch any of the documents um the documents the documentaries yeah you know what I mean um about Robin Williams and it will show how he mastered his craft how it became an addiction how eventually substance abuse came online and he became an addict to drugs for a little while and then eventually alcohol but when he when he was working he was full on even if it was a serious movie in between takes he would have everybody in stitches and they were like the next the next act that like the next thing that we're doing is supposed to be super serious. And Robin has me in stitches and crying and I have to immediately like get back into character and do this thing. And after uh, any movie or any series he was doing, he always had these big pockets of time where he would just go in and, and do nothing and be around no one for that rest and that rejuvenation. Yeah. We're also going to see the quickening happen. So the eight is a manifesting boss. Manifesting boss, again, infinite abundance. It is in many cultures, a very lucky number, the eight. And so it's connected to manifestation. So we're going to see manifestations speed up. Again, that inner world will reflect in the material world. So this is about understanding how to manifest like a boss and knowing that what we think, what we feel, and the actions that we take create our reality. So if you do not have high vibrational thoughts, if you do not have high vibrational feelings, if what it is that you are doing isn't a representation of the highest, most authentic version of yourself, just be mindful that you will create that too. And this isn't to be, again, overly critical. This isn't about perfectionism, but this is about playing in those spaces and knowing that if I align my thoughts with the highest good for myself, which is the highest good for all, then it will connect me to that infinite abundance. My heart compass, how it is that I want to feel and how I want my clients to feel and my family and my community and the world, that will connect me to the infinite abundance and the inspired action that I take if it's connected to my high vibrational thoughts and feelings that will also support the reality that I'm creating. And all of us, Jill, myself, I just can feel it that your audience as well, Jill, we are here to make an impact and we want to give and we want to give more. So it's also understanding that the more that we have, the more we can give. So ensuring that generosity is a part of our conscious business plan and the soulful strategies that we do. Because again, there'll be this quickening. So manifest like a boss. That feels good too, doesn't it? I, all of this feels so good to me. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. like... Love it. Yeah. So with that, like we need to put our big girl CEO pants on. All of us. And they're, they're I'm no doubt that many of us have put them on already, but to a much higher degree. Uh, This is about knowing and not that infinite abundance is 100% connected to money and wealth, but it is, and it is a part of it. I mean, abundance comes in many ways, an abundance of clients, right? An abundance of love, an abundance of time to rest. So there's a lot of ways that infinite abundance is going to show up, but specifically as it 
connects to our business as spiritual entrepreneurs, we need to have a really good relationship with money and be in right relationship with money. So the big girl CEO pants are inviting you to have a conscious spending plan. Notice how I didn't say budget. It's about having a conscious spend spending plan. Money loves intention. Money loves to know what do you want it for? And many of us, again, because <laughs> we are being told that we are not enough and that there is not enough, we have a difficult time with this. So this is like the number one limiting belief for 2024 to overcome. The number one feeling, like if you have shame or guilt about making money and spending money, these are the feelings to elevate in 2024. And get really clear on your conscious spending plan. So this is looking at the things that you're doing out of obligation that are not bringing you joy and claiming it and saying, I want to hire somebody who is really great at this thing that I don't want to give attention to detail to because it takes me away from my dharma, from my purpose. And so I want to call in an extra $10,000 a year so I can pay somebody $10,000. I can pay them what they're worth. I can pay them a livable wage or more. Gosh, that feels good to be able to pay somebody more than the bare minimum livable wage in an area, right? And get really clear on that. And it's okay to want nice things for ourselves as well. The eight loves luxury. And spiritual luxury is this brand that I am building. And it's so oxymoronic in a lot of ways. We've been taught as well that spirituality and luxury don't really go hand in hand. And I disagree with that. Animalism. Yeah, that it was, it's, it's a designed on purpose again, to make us feel like there's not enough and we're not enough. So I moved on a mountain and I have a gorgeous ocean view. I live on the ocean. It is literally five minutes from my house. So in my conscious spending plan, there's a boat. Why wouldn't there be? <laughs> this makes sense for where I live and the lifestyle that I'm creating. Mm -hmm. And when the guilt or the shame comes, well, you know, who am I to have a boat? How does that serve other people? Being on that boat connects me to God, goddess, all that it is, the universe source gets me away from my computer, gets me away from my phone, gets me connected, my inner world to the outer world, which keeps me in a high vibration. So I'm taking care of myself. I'm resting, I'm rejuvenating. And I'm recognizing that the more I have, then the more I can give. I can see and feel how my soulmate clients will benefit from that. And you know what? They're all over the world. If they end up in my neck of the woods, I will bring them on that boat if they sign a waiver. Just kidding. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so improving energetic relationship with money. And again, the big girl CEO pants, uh, when, when I talked about the low vibration of eight, learn how to delegate this year as well. Like really the eight energy loves attention to detail, but if it's something that's outside of your comfort zone or something that's not your uh, path, your area of expertise, then find somebody that has that and delegate. This and I have a, I have something to add to that in, Please. in terms of finding somebody because mm -hmm. I get asked all the time. So how do I find somebody who can? And my answer to that is put it out there. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just to the universe. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of person I I want to attract. Mm -hmm. These are all their characteristics. And then be curious how that person's going to show up. And that person will show up. And it doesn't have to show up on Fiverr or on Upworks or on any of these other things. You'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. I, I've been surprised at the people that have come on my team that have just come into my periphery I needed something and yeah I have a VA and I love her to death and she's yeah. just like she is so good at what she does and mm -hmm. I, I am so not 
I gave her a framework. This is what I needed to have done. And she's just like, yeah, and I'll just do it this way. And she mm -hmm. just like, but it wasn't like I was out there looking for a VA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just because happened. you were open to receive. The same thing happened for me. I had to think and believe and change my mindset first that this person exists. There is somebody out there that I can trust mm -hmm. that will do this, that will do an incredible job, that will do it better than I could have even imagined, that's going to tell me what I'm missing, that's going to show me things that I didn't even think of or consider. And this is how it's going to feel working this with this person. Oh, it's going to feel so expansive, so empowering, so inspiring. There's going to be enthusiasm right? It feels like partnership. It feels like true connection. Yes. And yes, there is this part of, I agree with you where it is about thinking and feeling and believing. And sometimes there is, most of the time there's inspired action that yes, is being invited to take. And for me, I do bring it to my higher counsel, to my spiritual support team first. This is who I'm looking for. And this is why, and this is how I want it to feel. And so can you bring another person from my soul family onto my team? I'm ready to onboard somebody. I'm ready to accept. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to surrender control. I'm ready to trust and accept that this person's going to come my way. And it is, it's really cool. This is what it means to be like a manifesting boss. I did this. And I remember saying to my partner out of frustration, because I had just fired a company and I said, I, this is, this is what I want. I just want this. And I was very clear and articulate with exactly what I wanted. And my best friend texted me and she said, you know, just to check in, how are you? And I said, to be honest, in this moment, I'm a little stressed and overwhelmed. I had to fire the company uh, that I was working with. And this isn't a surprise. It was something that was building up, but I thought that I would have the time to keep them while I was finding and hiring somebody else. So there wasn't this gap and I didn't, something had happened and it needed to be an immediate disconnect with that organization. So I told her this story and she said, how can I help? And I used to work with her in another uh, agency for eight years. So I know her work ethic and it's incredible. And I said, kind of jokingly, let me hire you. And she said, what are the details? Like, okay, we're texting back and forth. I told her exactly how much I wanted to pay. I told her exactly the, the jobs that I wanted her to do. And she immediately responded and said, I can't believe this is happening. An hour ago, I sat at my kitchen table with my husband and said, I just want a job I can do at home for X amount of dollars that's easy, that's also allowing me to contribute to the greater good in some way, shape, or form. And he's like, I don't know where you're going to find that. And then here I am texting her and she told her husband and he said, is she serious? And he goes, if you know, Annie, yes, she's absolutely serious. He's like, get her on a call. And we've been together for over a year now. And she's absolutely incredible. And we stepped into it with this. I don't want to lose you as a friend. That's important to me. You and your husband and your children are important. This is what I value most in our relationship. And I don't want a business to come between us. And so we created this beautiful conscious contract of how we wanted it to feel and the values we were gonna uphold and how we were going to navigate this working relationship. And even with our weekly meetings, the first thing we do is we, how are the kids? It's always about love and personal first. And we give it that time and then we move into the masculine and say, okay, <laughs> let's, let's talk about the work that needs to be done. Yeah, they I, exist. My story is, almost exactly the same I, and it's just it feels so good it's like mm -hmm. it's like can. you're a family and it's yeah. you know it's in it's not it's not an employer employee relationship it's part of the team and they're taking mm -hmm. their portion of the proceeds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that we don't lean on people on Fiverr or Upworks, for example. I just did that this week for the 2024 Soulful Planner. I got to the point of the print, setting it up to be printed, this book to be printed. I've never done that before. I've never sold a book on Amazon before. 
<laughs> and didn't realize at the beginning of the process that an ebook is formatted very differently than an actual printed book. I'm like, oh no, I told everybody it was going to launch on this day. And I'm like, I have 800 pages between two books to edit and to shift these margins. And I started doing it and I timed myself for these five pages that I did and then immediately stopped and said, no, Anne-Marie, this is not your area of expertise. This is going to take you hours and hours. And there's somebody out there in the world. And this was at midnight. There's somebody out there in the world. This is their daytime. And they have a program that they can plunk this in and it's going to take them like an hour. And so I just trusted, I put it out there, said the specific amount of money and I woke up and the job was done. Yeah, it's beautiful when things like that, you could just like lean yeah. into it. Yeah, this exists. So big girl CEO pants, manifesting like a boss, hanging out in that space. The, there's a couple other things I just want to touch on. The law of momentum this, I highly encourage all of us to really focus on the law of momentum this year. And we've already talked about it a little bit, both Jill and I, where it's these tiny steps that lead to giant leaps. There's a, a story happening in the coaching industry for a while that people showing up and I just took a quantum leap to six and seven figures. And Jill and I both know that's not real. Overnight successes typically aren't real. That it was this culmination of baby steps, one foot in front of the other, in alignment with higher vibrational thoughts, feelings, and inspired action, that yes, one day lead to a quantum leap. That yes, one day collapses timelines, but it's really important for us to understand that law of momentum and honoring our cycles, understanding and knowing our cycles. That's why I created the soulful planner that's rooted in numerology. So we can understand the cycles energetically through numbers and our own. And also as women, as females, we also work in this 28 day cycle. So stop planning in 24 hour periods. Just stop. If there's one thing that I encourage my clients to do. Now I'm, I'm a little different. I'm a visionary. I have double nines in my energetic code. So I do plan for a full year. I also know what's going to go on in three years or five years. And I also know that a lot of the things that I visualize probably aren't going to come to fruition because it's something bigger and better than I ever imagined. But if I didn't take that baby step to visualize it, that someday I would speak on international stages, I actually had a visualization of being on a stage in another country. I didn't think it would be through podcasts. But how amazing is that? It's a lot less stressful. I love traveling. And I'm not saying I don't want to travel or I don't want to speak on international stages. But this is quite simple <laughs> to reach a large audience with less effort, right? Exactly. So understanding these cycles and your cycles and even just your 28 day cycle, that supports us to eliminate the burnout and the stress. That creates momentum and ease. When we do this, when we step into this understanding, there's gonna be a lot of burning it down. <laughs> There's a lot of obligation energy that we will step away from. We'll stop doing things out of obligation. We'll stop doing things uh, to please other people. There are aspects of our life that eight energy is going to mirror for us. The things that are blocking our inner sovereignty and blocking the infinite abundance that is our birthright. Burning it down that we are not enough and that there is not enough. That is the biggest lie the biggest lie that we have been told and believed. And all of this will contribute to us reclaiming that power of infinite abundance. Yeah. This that year, is so exciting. Right? So this year, the heart-centered rituals and practices, like if there was one that I would leave everybody with, it's to find your joy. Find your joy. And if you're not sure how to go about doing that. My favorite way is think about what you love to do as a child. What did you love to do as a child? 
And even if that doesn't translate into your business, if it doesn't make sense, translating that into your business, trust that eventually it will, but just go and do that. I loved, loved writing books when I was a child. So I'm writing books now. I just made a beautiful soulful planner. It feels so good. No idea what the infinite abundance is going to be connected to it. I've never sold anything on Amazon before, but I'm having fun doing it. It brings me a lot of joy. And I'm just going to hang out in that space of trusting that it will in some way, shape or form, divinely connect me to infinite abundance. I had a, a soulmate client and she talked about, she said, well, I was an adult when I was a child and I can relate to that. I didn't get a lot of a child but I immediately moved into teenager when I was quite young. And then by the time I was a teenager, it was adult. And I said, but at that time, when you were the age of a child, what'd you do? And she said, I love gathering the community and just like gazing and, and watching the clouds go by and then dreaming things up. And she said, but that has nothing to do with my business. I'm like, you literally work with spa wellness owners around the world to recreate a vision for their own business it's exactly the same and she had this huge aha moment I said so she goes so I should go camping more often I'm like yes absolutely in 2024 block off more time to just go and lay in those beautiful fields of flowers and daydream so find your joy find your joy and daydreaming is a great way to do it mm -hmm. I so appreciate you coming on and sharing all these predictions with us and this is, I'm so excited for next year. Me too. Me <laughs> like, too. I, I know there's, there's a little bit more of this year left, mm -hmm. but it's just setting the stage for so much possibility mm -hmm. next year. And I'm, I couldn't be more excited. I, I would like to put the link to your planner, your soulful planner in the show notes also. Absolutely. I'm not sure if you sent it to me or not, but I'll, I'll figure out a way to get it. But yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I, would love to to do that is there one thing that you'd like to leave the audience with today well i would love to continue connecting with people so you can find me at anmariemckenzie.com uh, the soulful planner will be on my website i have lots of freebies to understand your energetic code i'll have an ebook there for you as well so if you want to look at the energy for 2024 and go in deeper into each month energetically to plan your life and business uh, that's available uh, for free. I just want to remind everybody again that you are enough and there is enough to reclaim the power of infinite abundance that is your birthright. I'll leave it right there. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind the scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at the U World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com.